Good morning, Facebook. I'm Pastor John Jeter at North River Bible Baptist. I want to welcome you back to our online Bible teaching. Today is Sunday, and I always say a day that the Lord has made, and we're glad to be in the house of God. Thank the Lord for the saints of God that are here today. We are praying for those that uh, could not be here for whatever reason, and some may have, you know, feel still that they can't get out because of the coronavirus, COVID-19, and again, that's their conviction. So just pray that God will touch hearts and God will work things out that we can eventually be back to normal. We may not never get back to the, the normal that we used to, but if we can get back to having people in the church, in the house of God. I, I already said this, Hebrews say, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. In other words, God wants us to be in the house of God together so we can grow together and have fellowship together and have community together. You say, why is that, preacher? Because the body, the hand cannot say, I have no need of the eye. The eye cannot say, I have no need of the ear. We all are in the body. We need to be together to grow together. Amen? Amen. Thanks to Reverend Jerry Hale for last Sunday. I want to give a shout out to him for fourth Sunday. I think his topic was... I would have never made it without the Lord. So we want to thank you. And then we had communion. And we praise the Lord for that. And today is the fifth Sunday. We only have four fifth Sundays in, in a year. So every fifth Sunday, we try to have a time of what we call a family and friends day. Where you can go out and invite family and invite friends to the house of the Lord. So we started a series on the tabernacle, on the temple, the third temple. But we're going to deviate today because this is family and friends day. For those of you all that are watching by Facebook, if you have any family and friends, invite them to come in and listen or invite them to get on the link of Facebook and listen to the Word of God. This message is designed to reach families and friends for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We come to the fourth gospel, and we come to the gospel of John. So if you have your Bible, turn to the gospel of John chapter 5. The gospel of John chapter 5. Now, for you all that are Bible students, John is not one of the synoptic gospels. What is the synoptic gospel, Pastor? The synoptic gospel was the gospel that gave basically the same story. You'll find some of the same miracles, some of the same parables in all the gospels. But John is not one of the synoptic gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are. John was written some 25 years after them. But yet John was again a disciple. John again was an apostle. He was called the beloved. So we're going to talk about John uh, view today in John chapter 5. Before we get there, I want to say that we're going to talk about miracles. Now if you go to 1 Corinthians, you don't have to turn now, I'll give you this chapter 12, verse 10, they talk about the gifts that were given to the church. And the gift that was given, they say, and another, the work of the miracles. Uh, I know there's some controversy today, but I do not believe that God has given man uh, the power today to do miracles. When Jesus walked the earth, he did miracles. So I believe that we have the canon of the word of God today. So I believe miracles have ceased, but God still do miracles. Now, they are God miracles, they're not man miracles. When people, there have been people again, and they, matter of fact, I just saw on Facebook, that was a a girl was in the, I think was in the Detroit uh, morgue, and they found out she started breathing, and she was considered alive, and they, and they had already, the coroner had already said she died, and so yeah. that was a miracle. God brought her life back. And one of our pastor's friend, daughter, I think I, I shared that with you, got hit on the highway, and they put her in a, in, a, in, a, in a bag, and they let her lay out on the highway, and they was waiting on them to come pick up the two bags of her and somebody else. And when they went to get her out of the bag, she started moving. So I believe, I believe God should still do miracles. Amen? Amen? 1 Corinthians 12, 29 say, are all works of miracle? That's a rhetorical question. Paul is saying, no, all are not works of miracle. So we know that. But we do know that John, I want to show you a few, few verses before we get to John chapter uh, 5. Turn to John chapter 10. And again, we're a Bible believing church. I'm Bible teaching church, so you don't have to follow me in the Bible. I just believe that we need to stay with the Bible. Not my philosophy, not my opinion, but what does say in the Word of God. John chapter 10. 
If you got to say amen. Amen. I want you to look at verse 41. And you get that same amen. amen. John chapter 10, verse 41. Read that with me on 3, 1, 2, 3. Amen. And Mary resorted to him and said, John did no miracles, but all things that John spake of this man were true. true. So John the Baptist didn't do any miracles. So I want you to know that everybody wasn't given the, the, the gift of miracles. John the Baptist didn't do any miracles. But Jesus did a whole lot of miracles. So you see, God has different ministry for different people. Now, one of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament was Elijah. I want you to know that Elijah didn't write any books. So you got other prophets. Jeremiah wrote the book of Jeremiah. Isaiah wrote the book of Isaiah. But Elijah was just on the same level as them, but he didn't write any books. So every prophet, every minister, every preacher has a different calling. So everybody don't have the gift. The certain gift. Everybody got different gifts. Amen? Amen. So I want you to follow me today as we look at the Apostle John, as we talk about the miracles that Jesus had. Turn back to John chapter 5. We're going to read 16 verses, so I want you to be patient with me today because I want to make sure I get you to see the whole picture. I'm going to read verse 1, you read verse 2, until we get down to uh, verse 16, and then we'll pray. I'll give you my title, we'll pray, and we'll get into the Word of God. John chapter 5, you got to say amen. Amen. Well, let's go back up to the last verse in John chapter 4, verse 34. I'm sorry, verse 34. You got to say amen. Amen. It said, this is, again, the what? Miracle. Second miracle that Jesus did when he was coming out of Judea and Galilee. So I want you to know that we're going to talk about the miracle, but then just, this, he just finished the second miracle with the noble son. We're going to talk about the first miracle with change of water to wine. Now, when we, the second miracle with the noble son, now we get to the pool of Bethesda, and it's the third miracle. So it's not like Jesus had done 20 miracles. No, he just started his ministry. He changed the water to wine, number one. He healed the noble son, number two. And now we get to the pool of Bethesda, which is number three. Verse one. After this, there was a, a feast of the Jews. I'm sorry, God, my eyes are not with me. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Verse two. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. And in these lay a great multitude of impotent people. Folks, a blind, halt, wither, waiting for the moving of the water. Verse 4. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in were made whole of whatever disease he had. So when we get in there, we're going to talk about the angels troubling the water. We're talking about whoever got in first was healed. Okay? And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity of thirty and eight years. Verse 6. When Jesus, Jesus saw, saw him blind, blind and, and knew that he had been there a long time, time in that case, he, he said, said unto him, Will thou be made whole? So here we have a paralytic or a, heel, uh, a man that's crippled or handicapped. He's sitting at the pool trying to wait to jump in so he can get healed. And Jesus said, Wait a minute. Will you be made whole? Okay, verse 7. The emperor, I read that. The immigrant man, oh, the, 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 the immigrant man answered him, Sir, I have no man mm. when the water is troubled to put me in to the pool. But while I am coming, another, this is what he's saying, I, I, I can't never get that quick enough, step us in down before me. Verse 8. And Jesus, Jesus said, said unto him, Rise, rise take, take up thy bed, bed and walk. When we get in there, we're going to look at Jesus and even deal with this. If he's you know how people have all these issues. Jesus said, yes. just, just take your bed and walk. Get it. And look at verse, now read that with me. And immediately the, the man, man was made whole and, and, and took up his bed and walked. And, walk. and on the same day was the Sabbath. And when we get into this, we're going to read the next verse. The man got healed. Then you're going to find out the Pharisee had a problem with it. Yes. There's something wrong with that teaching, but we're going to get into that. Verse 10. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Verse 11. He answered them, and he that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and 
woman did answer they him, what man is that which said unto thee? They said, who, who told you to do this? Take up your bed and walk. Verse 13. And he that was healed was not who it was. For Jesus, Jesus had conveyed himself away and multiplied. So Jesus told the man, healed the man, then he left. And the man didn't really know who it was. But look what happened. Afterwards, Jesus finding him in the temple. So one night we do find out that the man was outside at the pool, but then as soon as he got healed, he went to church. Yeah. So that's why a lot of people, yeah. when they get healed, yeah. when they get out of the hospital bed, they don't go to church. Yeah. When they get out uh, off whatever uh, 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 vice they were, they don't go to church. This man went straight to church. Yeah. Jesus found him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto thee. Verse 15. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. That's another thing. He wasn't afraid to tell them. You know, some people don't want to tell people they got saved. Look, he said, it was Jesus. You want to know who healed me? It was Jesus. You know who saved me? It was Jesus. He came right out and told them. Now read verse 16 with me. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. That's a sad comment. That's what we're talking about. Jesus said, now if a donkey was to fall in a hole, he said, you get him out. Yeah. And, and, and you do all these other things. But because the man got healed or saved, you don't want to be right. So we're going to talk about this today. So my title of my message today is, do you want to be made whole? Jesus asked the man, do you want, the man been in the land for 38 years. Nobody can, can help me. He said, well, do you want to be made whole? Let me help you out. Physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, do you have a problem? Do you want to be made whole today? Today, God can control the Lord. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit today. Can control your soul if you want to be made whole. Amen? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for another Lord day. The day that you have made, we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for waking us up this day, Lord, giving us a mind to be in the house of prayer. Thank you for the saints of God that came out to the house of prayer. Praying for those all over the world, Lord, that have a desire on the first day of the week to come hear the word of God, to come fellowship, to come communion, to be with your people. Thank you for the churches that are planted by your right hand, the preachers that are preaching the word of God. Lord, I'm praying for those that are maybe unclear on following the CDC rules. I know, Lord, there's a lot of issues. People are complaining. But Lord, help us to use common sense. I already told the church that we need to apply the rules at CDC. Six foot of uh, uh, distance. Uh, quarantine if you if you asymptomatic if you have a uh, sickness or, or sneeze or temperature not to come around so Lord help us to do those things to bring honor and glory Lord we praying for again the nurses the doctors the, again the paramedics the MLA drivers Lord the, the, the policemen the firemen so Lord we praying for again the lab technician the grocery workers Lord all the people that are working today Lord to, to work around this room praying that you would Again, give them your grace and your mercy. Praying for those that have lost loved ones. Praying for even some of the, the profession that have lost their lives treating the coronavirus. So, Lord, we pray that you would pour out your grace and your mercy and your love. And you would never be praying for a vaccine or praying for some medication, Lord, to help build our immune system. And we will be able to withstand this virus. Lord, we heard about the, the bubonic plague. We heard about the Spanish flu. We heard about all these other things uh, that have come. NH, uh, thank you. N1H1. Lord, so you know about it. So we pray that you would help us, Lord. Thank you for our church family. Praying for our children, our, grand, our, our grandchildren. Praying for those that cannot be here and our local our members. Praying for those who are recovered. Now, Lord, I pray that you help me to rightly divide the word. Forgive me of my sin. Help me to preach and teach the honor of the word. This family and friends that draw people into you, Lord. And we'll be careful. Give you all the honor and the prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Trouble the war. Oh, this is a, a, a beautiful story. Man, crippled, paralytic, can't get no help. A little Bible quiz for you Bible students. How long did Jesus preach? Three years. Three, Three and a half years. Bible student, how old was it when he started preaching? Thirty. So here this man is 38 years he's been sitting there. So this man was sitting there before Jesus was born. Mm -hmm. 
For 38 years, he been, so even before Jesus was born, this man been going out there, sitting at the pool every day, and somebody said he probably had wheels or no, he probably pull his wheelchair or pull his bed, and he would get to that pool, and he said, maybe this is the day. Maybe this is the day that the water will be drunk. Maybe this is the day that I can jump in. When I jump in, I'm going to be healed. But we'll find out he's been doing it. I want y'all to hear me. 38 years. Amen. Isn't that a long time? That's a long time. Remind me about the woman that is the rug for 12 years. That, that's a long time. Yeah. That is ain't even my message, but this woman had been bleeding all the time and had that issue of blood for 12 long years and had been trying to get some help. But y'all know the story. And it's just not even my message. She touched the hand on the door. Right? Y'all hear me? Yeah. But here this man is. So how many miracles do you think Jesus performed? Well, let me just tell you. It says in John 21, 25, and there are also many other things of miracle which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, the world itself could not contain them. But let me tell you, Jesus does so, the only reason we have what recorded is so that we would believe. But Jesus does so much that no pen, no library could keep up with what he did. Amen, somebody? He does a miracle. He does a miracle. I'm so grateful that he's my Savior. Amen? Amen. The background. This is, again, the second, the third miracle. I told you about the first. You changed the water to wine. And by the way, let me just say this again. People get this all out of context. He's not talking about that fermented wine that you buy at the liquor store. The people all get this all out of context. And Jesus, you know, he changed the water to wine and people drink wine. Let me tell you, he's not talking about the fermented wine that you drink today. He's talking about the wine from the grape juice. He's talking about back then when, when they would mash grapes and the wine would come out, it was 100% pure grape juice. So no, he ain't talking about intoxicating wine. Preach, preacher. I don't know what y'all get to do. Jesus said, no. Not intoxicated. By the way, if that was so, why did they arrest you for DUI? If the wine's okay. Oh my God. If that was, if, if wine is okay, well, why do all these people have all these here domestic abuse in home? Husband get drunk and beat the wife. If wine was okay, then why do they have these teenagers that drink and, and, and run and kill people? If they have all, if wine, no, the wine is not okay. Amen, somebody. Amen. So we're talking about Jesus. Now that was the first one. Now he's at what we call Bethsaida. The Bible said it was a feast. Now, it's amazing that this is the only place that is written in the whole Bible, in the Gospel of John. Because what feast was, we don't know. Because there was only three feasts. There was a Passover, and there was a Pentecost, and there was a Feast of Tabernacle. So this is, must be an unusual feast where there was a pool. And by the way, it's a sheep pool. If you study Nehemiah, they had these gates and the sheep would come in. And there was a pool that was out there near the feast. And that pool was where people would come and lay around the pool trying to be the first one to get in to be healed. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Amen, somebody. Thank you. So Jesus Christ is dealing with, in the first two miracles, he's dealing with individuals. He dealt with the bride and the groom. You remember? They ran out of wine and Jesus told them to take the the wine, fill up the six water pots, and then draw out of it, and then he said, give it to the, 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 the bridegroom, whatever, and he said, man, this is the best wine. So he was dealing with individual. And the second wine, the no one's son, no one was sick. Jesus told him, go home, your son is sick. But now he's dealing with the religious group. It's sad to say that the, the hardest people to reach is the religious group. Religion won't save you, folks. Let me just help you out. There's churches all over the place. There's all kind of stuff. And there are people who know religion. But the Bible says that Israel was like that. They had so much religion, they knew not the Lord. Most of us grew up in churches that were religious. Most of us were baptized and wasn't saved. Most of us were dealing with, most people can quote the Bible, but they don't know the God of the Bible. Let me tell you, religion will not save you. Religion is like superstition. You need to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen, Amen somebody. In, Deut in Deuteronomy 2, it talks about Cadiz Bardell. It talks about how they was in the wilderness for 38 years. So really, this is a picture of Israel. This man was sitting there for 38 years. There's a picture of Israel was in the wilderness for 30 and 8 years, which was 40 years. And then they rounded up to 40 years. So it's a picture of Israel. So as I, we'll give you three points today. 
as we talked about, do you want to be made whole? Do you want God to stir up the water? Point number one, broken or lame people congregate with other broken people. Go back to our text, verse 3. It says, in these lay a great multitude of impotent people, a blind, half wilder, waiting for the moving of the water. You know, there's something about that. People that are in need hang around other people that are in need. Mm -hmm. People that are depressed hang around other people that are hurting hang around other people that are hurting. Well, let me take it a step further. People that are thugs hang around thugs. Mm -hmm. Bombs hang around bombs. Alcoholics hang around alcoholics. Drug dealers hang around drug dealers. Amen, somebody. And here's the biggest thing is Pharisees hang around Pharisees. Amen. People that are judgmental. People that are got all these rules and, and, and tell you what you can't do and what you cannot do. Let me help you out. Christianity is not about rules. It's about a relationship. If you came to church and I said, well, your hair needs to be a certain way and your dress needs to be a certain length and you can't have any tattoos in and Let me just tell you, I would be wrong. It's all about Christ. Christ changed the person from the inside out. Amen? If, I, if God gets your heart, the outside will follow. Amen? Well, I don't have to tell you how to dress and how to talk and how to walk. So it's something that God will do. So we see broken people congregate with other broken people. However, Jesus asked the man, did he want to be made whole? Some people, I want you to listen, don't want to be made whole. They want to stay in their condition. So Jesus asked the man, now do you really want to be made whole? See, there's some people that like, I hate to say it, folks, but they like handouts. They don't want to get a job. You tell people, won't you go down and fill out an application all? No, I like getting the food stamp. I like getting the welfare check. I like getting the stimulus. But let me just tell you, you need to learn how to work. Work is not a curse. Work was given to Adam before the curse. God told Adam to take care of God. We need to learn how to get out of the bed and go to work. Amen? Amen. So some people don't, don't want to be delivered. Amen. Proverbs 12, 24 says, the slowful man roasts not that which he taking honey. So he won't even cook. You know, some people have food that they won't even cook. It. Let me tell you, you can't eat if you don't get up and cook. Amen. Yeah, you can have some beans and you can have some rice and you can have some 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 uh, pasta, but you got to cook it. The Bible says the slothful is at work is a great waste. He wastes a lot of time. The Bible and the Proverbs say the slothful lay in the bed and won't get up. I used to, I used to, and, and, and I'm not trying to be hard, but I used to wonder why people would sleep all day and get up at night and go run the streets all night and then come back home and sleep all day. Something wrong with that. The world start early. You need to get up. I think I told her another day, I don't know where that slogan came from, the early bird get the worm, but you need to get up. Schools, they get up and catch the bus at 6 o'clock. Amen? You got to get up. We start preparing our children. You need to, the world revolves around you getting up, going to work, taking care, getting some education, doing some things. So you need to do things to, to get up. You do not need to be slowful. The dilemma is, this man, let's go back to our text in verse 4. Here's the dilemma. They say, for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. So here's the problem. It was on a certain season. Nobody knew when the angel would come down. This man probably every day went and laid at the pool, waiting on troubling of the water. So here's another problem. It was on a certain time. Not only that, he had to be the first in. He had to be the first in line. He had to be the first one to get in before nobody. If somebody jumped in before him and got in, they got killed and he did. Amen. So he's in a dilemma. 
Y'all with me today? Amen. So we need to realize that we need to be ready, always ready to do things. I tell people you need to do preventative maintenance. You need to put preventative maintenance on your car, preventative maintenance on your house, preventative maintenance on your body. Don't wait till you get the check in anyway. You know what we do? <laughs> we wait till we get the check. Well, we wait till we get the oil print. So don't wait till then you be done running the motor. Same thing, we're just talking about getting a physical. You need to get some blood work. You need to have a analysis. You need to test. Make sure you don't do that. There are some preventative measures for cancer. Amen? So let me tell you, don't wait till the last minute. Broken people hang around. Some people, again, are uh, religious. They just, I hope, uh, uh, now I know I'm not preaching any of y'all here. The whole time they open their Bibles on Sunday. That's not when you ought to open your Bible. You ought to open your Bible every day. This is your spiritual food. You eat every day, then you need to get into the Word every day. It don't have to be a lot. You can just do a verse or you can do a chapter. But you need to eat every day, you need to eat the Word every day, and you need to pray every day. Amen? Pray, read. You need to do these things to bring honor and glory. The Jews had three times a year where they go to Jerusalem. And then they had the Jubilee, which was the 50 year. That's a long time to wait. This man had been waiting 38 years. Sometimes people wait 50 years to get free. No, you don't need to wait 50 years. At the pool of Bethesda, again, it was the first time, first serve. It was only limited to one. It wasn't like the first 10 got in. It was only the first one. So if the man was sitting there and the angel came and stirred the water and somebody leapfrogged and jumped in before him, he had to sit another 38 years. You got with me? So this is a sad situation. The Jews, it was only for the Jews. Now let me just clear this up, because some people have already messed this up with the interpretation of the Bible. They said, well, you know what that pool was, what? It was just a hot tub. It was a jacuzzi. <laughs> you know what it was? It was a summer. It was one of these things that you put salt tablets in, you turn on the ringer, and it is. Let me tell you, all that may be good therapeutic, but that's not what this was. This was a real pool. This was real water. God sent an angel down and stirred the water, and whoever got in, well, we don't care what kind of disease they had, they were healed instantly. Amen? Amen. Point number one, broken people congregate with other broken people. Point number two, God or Jesus' miracle are unexplainable to the human logic, to the human mind. I can't explain to you what happened to the water. The Bible says an angel troubled the water. Move the water. I can't explain to you what happened. All I can tell you is that I believe the word of God. I believe in miracles. No man, he said, no man can help me. What he's saying, we live in a doggy dog world. Every man was for himself. Nobody going to come and help me. You know, uh, recently I was just kind of reading. Used to be a time when an old lady would cross the street. People would help her cross the street. An uh, old lady, somebody would, 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 would grab her purse. Somebody would run that, that, that person down and get her purse back. We, not, we, don't, we don't live in that world anymore. We got people who will be standing watching you get ripped off. We got people that will stand by and watch you get carjacked and do nothing. Let me tell you, we need, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. I'm my brother's keeper. If something is going wrong, we need to try to step up and help that person and not worry about our own self. Amen, somebody. So here we have trouble in the water. Let me give you some Old Testament examples if you don't understand the trouble in the water. There was a man named Naaman. He was a mighty general. He was in the Syrian army. The Syrian army had brought some Israelites into captivity. His wife had a little Jewish woman, a little Jewish girl working on him and found out that Naaman had leprosy. Y'all remember the story? And she told him, say, won't your husband go as a prophet down in, in Israel that will heal him? And Naaman went down to prophet Elisha. Y'all know the story. And Elisha didn't even come to the door. He told him, I need you to go down and dip seven times in the river Jordan. Y'all with me? Trouble in the water. I need you to dip seven times in the river Jordan. And Naaman got mad, but one of his men said, man, why don't you do what he said if he told you something mighty? And he went down and went down one time and two times and Three times, four times, five times, and seven times. When he came up, the Bible said 
He had flesh like a child and leprosy and left. That's trouble in the water. That was a miracle. Amen. God had trouble in the water for Naaman. Let me hear somebody. Amen. Or maybe you don't remember Moses. Moses had the children of Israel in Exodus chapter 14, and they were trying to cross the water. It was called the Red Sea. Jerry preached to look at it on there. It wasn't the reeds in the Red Sea. There wasn't no six inches. It was a whole sea. And as he got to the water, the Egyptian army was following him. Y'all with me? And when he got there, Moses, they began to holler at Moses. What are we going to do? And God said, Moses, hold on. You got a rod in your hand. Take the rod, Moses, and strike the water. And y'all with me? Trouble the water. And the Bible said Moses took that rod in his hand and strike the Red Sea. Here's the trouble in the water. And the water rolls up and was a wall on the left side and on the right side. I want y'all to hear me. Today. That's a miracle. I still believe God can trouble the water. That man who was sitting there 38 years was wasn't on the water to get trouble. Naaman, the water was troubled. He got healed. Moses was having a problem. The water was troubled. And they walked on dry land. Y'all with me today? I don't want to leave out Joshua. Because you know Joshua was one of the 12 spies that went over and spied out Canaan. And when Moses died, Joshua came to the forefront as the leader. And they was getting ready to, to go into the promise. Now y'all with me today? But there was some water. There was the Jordan River that flowed over on the banks. Remind me of the Chattanooga River. It had always flowing over. We've been having flood. And like the Niagara Falls, it just all the time flowed over. And the Bible said God told Joshua, tell the priest to bear the ark to put their feet in the brim of the water. Y'all with me? Just put the feet in the water. No, no, that, that, that's faith, y'all. Because it's already flooded. It's just like me going down here to the dam, taking water the dam, and saying I'm finna cross right here at the bridge, and I'm finna step my foot in the water, and the water gonna rise up. Well, I want you to know that when they step their foot into the water, God troubled the water. The drug river rolls up. And cut off. The Bible says it stopped flowing. Amen? Amen. God controlled the water. And the whole nation in the wilderness went across on dry land in Jordan. So I want you to know that this parable that we're talking about now is nothing new. Jesus knows how to trouble the water. And the Bible says in Luke 5 17, the power of the Lord Jesus was present to heal. Jesus was doing the healing and he was doing the miracles. No, he was a thinner and he was a Messiah. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen? Amen. Jesus came and he came to, to pour out his spirit. So I want you to know today that the Bible said that Jesus is in the room. He's troubling the water. So if you got some trouble in your life, if you got some sin in your life, if you got some sickness in your life, if you got some financial struggle in your life, come to Jesus and step in the water. And he Amen. 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 Our last point is a get ready to close. The title is, Do You Want to Be Made Whole? Yeah. Jesus said, Do you want to be made whole? God can trouble the water. Whole physically. Some people need to be made whole physically. We're talking about Charlotte and her leg. God can work through that. Some people need to be whole heal emotionally. Some people get all their wet emotions on their sleeve. Let me tell you, God can heal you emotionally. Some people need to be be Heal psychologically and mentally, and, and, and they always have problems, anxiety, and things like that. God can heal you. you. You don't need a man. God has the power to stir up the water. Amen, somebody. Amen. And God can heal you spiritually. Point number one broken people congregate with other broken people. Mm -hmm. Point number two God miracles are ex unexplainable to the human logic. God can do whatever he wants. All we got to do is cooperate with God and wait on the Lord to intervene and be sensitive to his word and to his will. And we need to yield at his direction. And we need to move when God is working. When the iron is hot, the hottest you need to move. And then our last point, number three. When Jesus showed up, he has compassion on the handicapped, and at the same time, he rebuked the religious ones, Amen. the Pharisees. Jesus shows up and has compassion. Let's go back to our text, John chapter 5. Verse 7 says, 
Well, verse 6 says, when Jesus saw him and knew that he had been there a long time. When we talk about Jesus saw him and Jesus knew him, we talk about Jesus is omnipotent. Uh, 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 omnipotent. He has all knowledge. Omnipotent. He has all power and omnipresent. He's there at the same time. So when Jesus knew he had been there a long time, the Bible says, he said unto him, will thou be made whole? Amen. Now let me, let me ask y'all a question. That don't seem like a, a question of why would I not want to be how many I have that you? Look like Jesus asking the man a question that he, he already knew the answer. Jesus, now you know I want to be made whole. You know I've been crippled for 30 years. You know I got all these problems in my life. You know I got this emotional stress. You know I'm stressed out. But here's the problem. He need to own up to it. Amen. See, see, I already said that you have to confess that you need him. Yes. So Jesus asked the man, do you want to be made whole? I mean, here's the man answer. Verse 7. The impotent man answered him, sir, I have no man. Hmm. When the water is troubled, to put me into the into the pool. But while I'm coming, another step down before me. So the first thing the man said, well, well you know, you asked me a good question, but I don't have no help. I ain't got nobody to help me, Jesus. I mean, you know, I want to be made whole, but I ain't got nobody to help. But as I was studying this last night, God put on my heart, there was another man. And I'm not going to preach on him today, but there was a man in Mark chapter 2 that was paralytic. That four men, Jesus was in the house preaching, and they had him on the bed, and they couldn't get in because the crowd, they went up the steps and tore up the roof. Y'all remember the story? And dropped the man down in there. So that, that man had four people, but this man had nobody. So yes, there are sometimes people, your friends, sometimes people that come outside and help you. Because the same thing happened to that man in Mark. When he laid him down, Jesus said, take up your game, Mark. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. Now here we go back to John chapter 5. Jesus said, verse 8, rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Verse 9 said, and when immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked, and on the same day, went to Sabbath. Oh, this, this is a great picture. Jesus Christ healed that man that day. That man wanted to be healed, and Jesus had the power to heal. You remind me of the Good Samaritan. There was a man that came down from to Jerusalem and fell among thieves, and they robbed him and left him for dead. And the Bible said there came a certain priest, and when he saw the man, he walked on the other side. Y'all remember that? That priest is a picture of the law. The law can help you. And then the Bible says in, again, Luke 10, 32, a Levite came down and went and looked on him, but then he walked on the other side. The Levite is a picture of the prophets. The prophets did everything they could, but they couldn't save anybody. But then we have the Good Samaritan. Are y'all with me in there? The Good Samaritan is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said the Good Samaritan not only came alongside and saw the man wounded, the Good Samaritan bound him up, put him on his dump, took him to an inn, paid for the hotel room, and told him, the innkeeper, now when I come back, if you need something else, I'll do it for you. The same picture him. Jesus Christ told the man, I want, I want y'all to get the picture. He told the man, take up your bed and walk. I don't know if you've ever been in a, a college dormitory room. I don't know if you've ever seen a bunk bed. I don't know if you've ever seen a rollaway bed. But what happened was, this man was laying on the bed. And now let me just give it to you where I see it. And the man couldn't get up. And he couldn't move. But when Jesus said, rise up, he jumped up. And he folded that bed up. And rolled that bed up. And tucked it up on his arm. And started running around with his bed. And he and him, the people that should have been happy, but the Pharisees, they saw him with a bed running around the church. And they would say, what you doing, man? You ain't going to be carrying that bed on a Sunday or on the day of the week, which was a Saturday. But what they didn't understand was the man had just got healed. They should have been glad to say, we're glad that God saved you. We're glad that you've been healed. We're glad. I don't care about you having a bed. I don't care about And the man didn't even know what to say. He would say, I don't know. I don't know who we told me, who we told me. I got home. Amen. Amen. But let me just bring him home to you. Maybe, maybe you don't get it. See, it was at the age of 30. This man was 38 years old. 38 years. At the age of 30, 
John Jeter was on the bed of affliction. John Jeter was trying to get to heaven the best way he knew how. John Jeter had grew up in the church, had sung in the choir, had been baptized. John Jeter didn't know right from wrong. He was trying to do his good work. It was our way of work. But one day Jesus came along. Y'all hear me today? Jesus came along and he said, do you want to be made whole? And I'll never forget that question. Do you want me to that? And I didn't know how to answer. I would like to, but I would like to paralyze. I would say, well, how can I? And I went to the preacher. He didn't help me. And I asked everybody if they could help me. And I went to this church. They could help me. And I went, but Jesus said, but do you want to be made whole? And I remember in my heart of heart, I said, Lord, I want to be saved. Lord, I, I want to know for sure. And I remember saying, Lord, I'm a son. And Lord, would you come in my heart? And I remember in 1986, the Lord flooded my soul and my heart. And I got up and started running for the Lord. I could have had a bed, I could have had it, but I thought I could have, I was like the man that was at the pool of Bethesda, 38 years, it was 30 years. I started telling folks, it was Jesus, it was Jesus, it was Jesus. Amen. He's still doing it. Amen. He's still troubling the water. Do you want me made whole? The Bible says like this, let the wicked forsake his way. You want me made whole? Jeremiah 55, 5. The Bible says like this, I'm a watchman. He said if the wicked turn from his his sins and live. He shall live. Let me tell you, if you never heard the truth, if you think that you're on the bed of affliction, you can be delivered this morning. The Holy Spirit is in the house. Jesus Christ will say, take up your bed and walk. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. God is not interested in people dying and going to hell. Matter of fact, the Bible says God is long suffering. He's not willing that any should be. Now every time you see a miracle in it, New Testament is really a picture of sin. This man was, was afflicted. He was, again, a paralytic. He was, again, a handicap. He was helpless. But it's the same scenario with a sinner, a sinner that don't know the Lord. You are helpless. You, don't, you can't save yourself. You need somebody to come along and straight the water. Amen? Amen? The Bible says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Let me tell you, God put a void in your heart. I, I guarantee that man was sitting at that, at that pool every day saying, I hope one day the Lord have mercy on me. I hope one day somebody come alongside and tell me the truth. I hope one day. I remember when I, I was searching, and I remember in my own heart of heart, I was saying, I'm going to serve the Lord, but nobody, I didn't know where to go. I didn't have a preacher. I didn't have nobody. And I remember going to people and saying, how do I get right with the Lord? And nobody knew how to help me. Well, let me tell you, God knew. Amen? Amen. And God sent me a family member. I told you about my sister started witnessing me. I told you about my brother got saved. My mama got saved. And God began to work in my life. And God began to show me his manifestation of the word of God and in people's lives. See, people, all they really need to see is a real Christian. Yes, yes, yes. I, don't, I ain't need to see no thunder, no lightning. I don't need to see no earthquake. Yes. All I need to see was somebody that said they were living a Christian life. Yes. When my sister and my mama changed, and right before my eyes, I said, something wrong, something new. And then the, the good thing about it is when God saved me, I had all eyes on me. And I had my homies, and I had my, 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 my buddies, the street boys that I used to run with, they was all saying, is he real, is he real? But I got news to tell you. When God saved him, he saved him. Yes. God don't have saved him. Right. He saved him. See, I didn't get shaved. I got saved. Amen. See, I get swayed. I got saved. Amen. See, I got the real thing. Yes. The Bible says, now, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The Bible says, old things are passed away, and all things are coming. Yes. Let me tell you, when God told me to get up, I got up for real. Yes. And I got a love for the Word of yes. God. I don't know about you, but this Bible is good medicine for me. I love to read the Bible. I love to study the Bible. Now, I'm not trying to brag on myself. I'm just telling you what God did in my heart. Let me do the same thing in your heart. Yes, yes. Jesus Christ said, Jeremiah 3, 22, so I will heal your backslide. Hosea 14, 4 said, I love them freely, for my anger is turned away from them. John 5, 14 said, he said, go and sin no more. He told this man that was there for 30 years. Now, let me just help you out. Everybody that Paralytic or that's deformed or that don't necessarily mean that they are sin. We all were born in sin. But apparently, just like the woman that was caught in adultery, when Jesus healed her, or he told her, he said, anybody condemned me? Everybody had to leave? He said, neither do I. Then he told her, go and sin no more. 
Amen? Jerry, you know, he was in my message. Jerry was saying, Jesus, the day I gave my life to the Lord and, and got baptized, I went out to the car and I still had some stuff in the car. <laughs> the, Lord, the Lord had to take it away. The Lord had to take it away. Now, people ask me all these questions. The Lord can take the taste out of your mouth. <laughs> the Lord can take the cigarette out, out, out of your mouth. The Lord can take the cheating out, out, out of your system. Yes, he can. And I'm, I'm not talking about something I heard. I'm not talking about somebody that told me. I'm talking about what he did for me. I'm talking about what he did for me. Now, uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not here to paint the town red and tell you how wicked I was, but I was a vile, wretched son. I was on my way to a devil's hell. I was living up a life that wasn't conducive to Christian living. And God took it and threw it in the deeps of those y'all listening to me. And he buried it. And he gave me a new life. And let me tell you, because of Jesus, I'm alive today. The old man, 38 years. Now let me just give you this and as I close. When he got up, it was on the Sabbath. And the Jews were upset with Jesus Christ because Jesus had healed the man on the Sabbath. And Jesus had to kind of tell them, he said, well, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. He said, y'all have got that all backwards. He said, God didn't give you a law that you put over man. God gave you a law that's supposed to. And then he said, by the way, I'm Lord of the Sabbath. I can do what I want on the Sabbath. Matter of fact, there was a time Jesus' disciples was, was going through the cornfield. They plucked some corn on the Sabbath to eat. And they was upset. Why are your disciples are eating on the Sabbath? Well, let me tell you. Let, maybe I can get you out. Okay, it wouldn't have been so bad if the Levites had added these extra rules to the Sabbath. See, the Sabbath had some good points. But then they came with this law that you can only travel so far on the Sabbath. Yeah. So what, what they would do was, to keep from breaking the law, they would travel just three quarters of a mile instead of a whole mile. So well, they started coming up with these, what we call the loophole. And they caused problems. Yeah, I don't know what you know. There was a time, I, I just shared it with you. Y'all you know how milkshakes came about? Where you take milk and you take ice cream? Well, at the time, you weren't supposed to mix or stir anything on the Sabbath. So what happened was, this person got some ice cream, and they got some milk, and they started stirring on the Sabbath. They said, you done broke the law. And they said, no, that's not the law. That's a milkshake. Uh, a milkshake. It, 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 was, it, it came like that. So I wasn't doing any work. See, see, we got to the point where we started adding work. If a woman got up and, and, and pressed her hair, that was work. Are y'all listening to me? If I boiled some water and, and, and boiled some egg, that was work. And so they got to the point where they made legalism out of the law. And Jesus said, the law was not made for that. I came to seek and to say that was law. He told that man, take up your bed today on the Sabbath and walk. And the man obeyed Jesus. Jesus is more interested in us obedient than he is sacrificed. Amen? So we need to remember that. The parable, God answers to no one. He don't answer the Pharisees. He don't answer the Sadducees. He don't answer no one. Jesus said, my father worked. He's been working by the way. Let me explain it to you. Maybe you didn't understand. The Bible says God built the world in six days and he rested on the seventh day. People get that all mixed up. It don't mean that God stopped working because the world still was spinning. No, it just means he set aside a day to worship and praise him. God has been working seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and he worked all the time, every day. He never quit. If God was to quit, the world was spin out of existence. So God is working overtime, all the time. Amen? Amen. Now, I bet you believe this one. Satan worked all the time. Yes. I mean, Satan will be every day on you. Seven days a week, 24 hours. So if Satan worked all the time, I guess no. God got to be working because he got to keep him at bay. So God answered to nobody. And this is what this man was telling the Pharisee. Jesus saved me. And God is my father. So guess what? I'm going to take my bed up the wall. And one other thing I said as I close. He didn't tell the man to go through a 12-step program. You know how sometimes you, you, you go and, and you have here that I got it myself. Reciters, or you have tendonitis, and then they say, well, now you got to go through. Now you got you to go there for six weeks. And then you got to go in there and tell you, lift your knee up and hold it up now. And then they tell you, you better go to your chiropractor. Let me tell you, when God... He that man. Immediately. Immediately. Yes. Oh, y'all listen. He jumped up. He didn't say, oh, 
I still got some pain, man. No, he didn't say that. He said, look, I'm whole. I just found out about acupuncture. Now, I'm not, I'm not preaching or teaching. But I, I had a physical therapist say, I can do you some deep-seated acupuncture without taking knees. I said, hold on a minute. I said, I think I'm going to just trust the Lord. <laughs> Let me just tell you, God still do miracles today. Amen. God still heals people today. Amen. I'm going to share this with you. This just came to my mind. Holy Spirit brought to my mind. There was a girl who had been in a car wreck. And she couldn't walk. She was in a wheelchair. And for 12 years, she prayed that God would heal her. And one day, I don't know what happened, she came to church and asked the preacher, said, preacher, would you pray that God heal her? Now, I'm just telling you what God did. Now, God can do whatever he wants. And for some reason that day, not the preacher, the Holy Spirit impressed upon her to get up out of the church. <laughs> and she stood up. First time in 12 years. And, and everybody say, well, what happened? All I know is that God did a miracle. She, she walking today, and people couldn't believe it. So when she went to visit her grandmama, just to make sure her grandmama, because her grandmama said, now you just want to call me as an accident. And I don't understand. Just to make sure her grandmama wasn't, you know, dumbfounded, she put on some high heels. Oh, y'all want to be Because at first she couldn't walk. Now she's walking in high. So she, when she put on some high heel, and she began to walk up the steps with her grandma, her grandma was looking out the window. And she said, no, no. And she said, grandma, don't you know God raised me. Don't you know God healed me. Now I can't explain to you how he did it. I can't explain, but I can tell you this. God still heals today. Not, not man. Now, I'm not talking about faith. I'm not talking about me putting my hand on my I have no power. No preacher have no power. There's no more apostles. There's no more problem. But God healed that girl today. She's about 23, 24 years old. And she's walking around telling people that God is a miracle. So maybe today you got a problem. I want you to give it to you today. Give it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord and leave it. As I close, I always give an invitation. Maybe you listening by Facebook today. Maybe you going through some trial. Maybe you're down in the dump. Maybe you need deliverance. I don't know what it is, but I want you to know not only physical, but spiritual, emotional, psychological, and prayers God can deliver. So I'm here to tell you that if you will it, Jesus asked me, do you want to be made whole? If you want to be made whole, I'm willing to tell you, come to the Lord. Come as you are. Don't, don't worry about people around you. Don't worry about what's going on in your life. Come to the Lord as you are. So I'm going to give you a son's prayer today. If you pray that prayer, and you truly mean it from your heart, God will deliver you. You go something like this. Dear Jesus, Lord, I believe that I'm a sinner. Lord, I believe that you died. I believe that you were buried. And I believe you rose from the dead. Lord, I've been struggling all these years. Lord, come into my heart and save me, Lord. Write my name in the Lamb of the Lord. Lord, I want to be with you in eternity with all the saints of God. Lord, save me and make me a new creature. In Jesus' great name, I pray. If you prayed that prayer today, I want you to know that by the authority of the word of God, God has saved you. Now let me just say this. I want to clear this up so most people get this all mixed up. God don't heal everybody. And some people get mixed up. They say, well, I was in a wheelchair and I asked God to heal me and he didn't heal me. God is sovereign. I don't know who he's going to heal or who he's going to But I do know that man can heal me. Now the doctors do what they can because God gave them the, the, the knowledge of medicine. But trust in the Lord. Lead not in our own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your back. So until next week, Facebook, we'll be back on the temple. I want to encourage you. By the way, let me just say we have a revival on uh, 8th, 9th, and 10th. So if you never came uh, to a revival, I'd like to invite you to come out to a revival it's behind Old Charlie's on uh, Hicks and Pike at Bible Baptist. We'll be there every night, the 8th, 9th, and 10th, at 7 o'clock. So if you can come out in fellowship, we're going to have still practice social discipline and mass, but if you can come out, uh, we'd like to invite you out. So until next week, I want to encourage you to continue to look up and continue to depend on the Lord Jesus Christ. But in His Son, Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen.